Hello, Warlords. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk. Today, I'm joined by Fred from Sweden. How's it going, buddy? Hey, man. <clears throat> I'm kind of okay. Kind um, of just, okay? Yeah. <laughs> just uh, got through the the Nurgle sickness. Nurgle, yeah. Everybody's yeah. getting a turn. Yeah. So there's, the... a, there's a time stamp for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've been on the show before at least, I want to say twice at least, yeah, but twice. maybe even a third or a fourth time. You know, you yeah, kind of spanned twice. first edition and second edition uh, helping out. Yeah. Um, you did the Crusaders, I believe, for yeah, second edition. Right. So, nice. you I think were... I did the Crusaders for first edition and then also the second edition, but okay. um, I don't think I had so many games in when when second edition came out and we did the, the battle board discussion. Yeah, so I mean, that was probably yeah. just it was months. Like more like initial yeah. thoughts. Or something. Yeah, months after they came in, you know, within yeah. three to six months, some of those battle boards. So yeah, it <clears> might <throat> be worth revisiting, uh, honestly, at this point on, on some of those. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I didn't know. Yeah, we're kind of just learning second edition together back yeah. when we did those. So, um, yeah, are you still rocking the Crusaders? Um, moved on. No, I've actually been playing Scots for I think, yeah, I think since second edition came out. I started them like at the end of first edition, uh, but mm -hmm. I never got around to play them. And then as second edition progressed, I I stopped playing Crusaders and started playing Scots instead. And then actually, I sold my Crusaders last uh, winter, I think. Oh, no. Does Hamza but I have, have new them? ones. But I have new ones. <laughs> oh, so, this kind of a Monty thing. Yeah, I'm going to paint the new Crusader Warband. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, we are here today to mainly talk about Age of Magic. Yeah, that's right. Mercenaries. So this is something that you've cooked up. You actually pinged me a, quite a while ago and you know, showing me some stuff. I thought it was a great idea. And I was like, "Ooh, you know, let me let me do one." And then I yeah. kind of I fail, failed you there. I didn't come through, so I apologize if that uh, slowed the process down. No, but okay. um, you came out with them. You, know, you showed me original stuff, and then you came out, and it looks like the um, it's expanded list. There's more stuff yeah. on here. And so yeah. you originally posted these on the Studio Tomahawk forum. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. like all of the Saga Facebook groups that I know of. Uh, okay, in the Facebook groups too. Found them because the, the Saga forum didn't get uh, that, the, the response that I needed. <laughs> so. Sure, yeah. Well, I'm also <laughs> going to post this on the Saga Thursday Discord under the yeah. file section. So this is perfect for that. And um, yeah, I'm, I think this is a, a great idea. You know, the original book is pretty full, you know, t tough to push in anymore we've got mercenaries from other ages so mercenaries for age of magic is perfect and uh you know age of magic has been out for a while now you know kind of need something to spice it up maybe yeah um, so i i almost so at my all fathers tournament we played age of magic so i almost threw this in there okay but what i did was okay. let in the legendary stuff yeah. first you know so that's kind of how i spiced it up so yeah yeah um you know, if I for do it us, again, yeah. What? How, yeah. how do you guys run it? No, for us here, we like usually we have the legendary stuff like always included, mixed in from so, the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for Age of Magic, we've been playing like almost all of the uh, like legendary warbands. I think there are some that never cease play, like the dwarfs and. Yeah, some, some of them <coughs> don't don't look so hot. Some of them are better than others. There's still like a competition to who can paint eight monsters first. <laughs> so oh, we haven't nice. Seen that. Yeah, that's right. So we haven't seen the monster list yet, but I think that's a really good one. That's cool. So, you know, from a, like a balance perspective, you know, mixing in the legendary stuff, is there any issues in, in your opinion? Not that I have seen, actually. I think I think they're like more, more quirky than overpowered. Yeah, some of them... Uh, they you know, definitely like the, have their like strong sides, but usually they come with quite a heavy downside as well. So, mm -hmm. so especially the anytime they try to do a really big creature or something, yeah, it's pretty tough yeah. to make those worth multiple point. Yeah, you know, their resilience three or even four maybe, but yeah, 
that yeah. couple of levy charges will <laughs> still take it down. Yeah, so. or like multiple <laughs> composite bow shooting or stuff like that. So. Uh huh. Okay. Well, yeah. that's good to know because my event, we did have legendaries, but I kind of had an arbitrary restriction of no uh, sorcerers if you took a legend, if you took some legendary okay. stuff, just to kind of. <clears throat> keep it keep it in check but yeah after playing playing it you know and what you're telling me i don't yeah i'll just let it rip next time uh with yeah. the full legendaries um so have you guys played a event use it um, you know, where you you let these boys in no works. actually not we we were supposed to have like a small uh, age of magic tournament i think this winter when i first published this uh, uh mercenary collection but I think it only had like four participants, so Hamsa like tweaked it so it wasn't like like a tournament. It was more like a game day. I, I don't think anybody took um, the the mercenaries from here. But I'm running a, a tournament in November, I think, where I, I will try to push uh, people to like test out this stuff. Okay. Because when I wrote this, um, like uh, we haven't play tested any of them because we have a, quite a small group so it's impossible for us to play test like every unit 50 times and draw, sure. draw any okay. conclusions from that so we need people to actually play them and, and and we'll adjust them after that okay well that's great i was going to inquire <laughs> as to like what level of tested this yeah. you know if you're still so it sounds like you're, you're still looking for feedback yeah, yeah, yeah the document's totally. got the 1.0 on top yeah, here totally. so uh, so just to to give some perspective like i i wrote this list because as you said the, there was no mercenaries in in the age of magic book but after quite some games we found out that most of our lists were were the same so this uh, collection was written uh, with the the intent of creating like somewhere to get some flavor and mix mix your list up a bit mm -hmm. uh, perhaps complement your your army if you're if you're missing something and when I did it, I primarily thought that like there are a lot of miniatures out there in our collections that we rarely use. I tried to to write units that would fit certain miniatures, but with, but without forcing you to like choose an elf or a dwarf or sure or whatever. Uh, so they're quite generic, but still offer some some opportunities for for um, uh, yeah creating like a unique unit. Mm -hmm. um, and when I wrote the abilities. I mainly uh, went through the other books and picked out abilities from mercenaries that I liked from the other ages, like Age of Vikings and Crusades and uh, Age of Hannibal as well. Mm -hmm. So most of the abilities here are, are like familiar. Oh, you you will be familiar with them from the other books. Okay. Uh, and okay. some of them I wrote myself, but some of them are just renamed from other uh, books. Yeah. So I think there's some balance already just by by using the, the abilities that we see. Well, yeah, and so <coughs> mercs in the Age of Magic are going to be a, a tricky thing because yeah. you know in traditional saga, you know their downside is they can't use right. saga abilities. Yeah. So with Age of Magic, you're going to have synergies with spells. Yeah. And then you're also going to have most boards have some orders or orders reaction abilities yeah. meant to interact with the monsters which would also yeah. apply to these guys exactly. so you know everything exactly. being even you know kind of got to be a little more careful but yeah i think the magic side uh, like the magic buffs are fine because uh, mm -hmm. i think you you pay your point to invest in a sorcerer so then of course if you can come up with like a good combo then you should be able to do it but we'll see when people play the different boards if some like order abilities or passive abilities will do some crazy stuff with these units. <laughs> yeah, know. so I guess if anything <clears throat> jumps out at me, um, yeah. I'm kind of going to be coming at it from uh, Masters of the Under Earth perspective yeah. on the order side. That's what I've been yeah. playing recently. Maybe some Lord of the Wild. I've played a lot of those guys. And then on the other side, I'll be thinking about Otherworld, the yeah. demons, how, how these would fit in. So yeah. that's kind of my perspective. Yeah. So My know. perspective is I played a lot of Great Kingdoms when Age of Magic came out because mm -hmm. they had like an old empire army from fantasy there you go and there was some stuff that i missed like in the uh, great kingdoms list and for the chaos dice side there was also some units that i thought were like missing like and the other world can take like a really good shooting unit for example so mm -hmm. i tried to create stuff that could fit um in those lists as well yeah uh, so i think you did a good job of you know the 
just the factions themselves are archetypes and then yeah. the legendaries kind of spread that out. You know, I would say probably more, well, what are we missing from the Warhammer armies that we need yeah. to put in here? That's what the legendary stuff is to me, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. the, these mercs here, you know, these are also common, more common archetype. You know, I, what I think yeah. of probably from like novels and books, yeah, and stuff, exactly. you'll probably fan it. That's you know, my... When I found when I wrote these, like uh, the most fun part was like finding these typical fantasy tropes and mm -hmm. archetypes, as you said, and like try to incorporate them into the um, like uh, rule system. So um, that was quite fun as well to just collect and find all those uh, like fantasy uh, characters or yeah. things you would. So I've read yeah, you know, like a hundred different <laughs> fantasy books yeah. over the years. So it was fun. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, that is yeah, we do need that in, yeah. in the marks. Okay. So the way this will work, uh, I'm gonna post the, the flavor text uh in the video itself, yeah. and then we'll discuss the rules then. And yeah. then if you want to follow along more closely with the rules at home, you can go to the Discord, you know, yeah. run over yeah. there and grab it quick. Yeah. Um, so we're going to jump in here with the uh, the first one here. So the name of the document, uh, very appropriate for Warhammer, <laughs> Ravening Hordes. Yeah. Yeah. Jures, some some memories there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that was sixth edition Warhammer, but it's it's actually a callback to like an even earlier edition of Warhammer, the Ravening yeah. Hordes. For me, it's like when I was back in like uh, like primary school, I think, and we got this like paper pamphlet when they made like a new edition, and they, it had all the armies. So that's mm -hmm. where the name comes from for me, but I know it's like an older yep. uh, callback that's, as well. That's exactly what it was yeah. for me as well. So um, just at the top here, it says you can't um, change unit sizes, you know, basically follows the normal mercenary rules. Um, so there is some additional points for massacre points. If you get them over half or eliminate them, they'll be worth a couple extra points. And then survival, I think maybe they're worth half, half as much. Yeah at the end of the fight. But uh, first one up here is the Exiles. Yeah. Um, so this is the uh, the heir to the Empire, his companion. And uh, so it's six warriors for one point. They generate a Sagadai, armor four, aggression one on the companions. The heir has aggression of three, and he's always the last. So it's kind of like shield maidens a little yeah, bit. sort of. <laughs> they can have a... Fatigue limit of four, and they always get a free rest activation yeah. at the start of the activation phase. And they always count as being in light cover against shooting attacks. So it really yeah. does call back to the Maidens for that one there. Yeah, it's sort of like based off of the Maidens, but without the banner and all the the shield rules, mm -hmm. as you're familiar with. But for me, this is like the typical like small party of dwarves or elves or... Maybe some humans that are out there to to like reclaim something. Yeah, it's kind of like the fellowship. You know, you could say to yeah. you know just a group, it's a group of adventurers. If you have your D and D party of six yeah. guys, this is what you can use. Yeah, exactly. Represent the rules, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's a cool unit. You've got some uh, utility there with the free rest activation. So yeah, to me, uh, it's like. Uh, like a small unit that can like stand up for itself, even though you can't use abilities, you can just use them to, to like go out there and take an objective or yeah, chase down an enemy unit or something. They'll they'll just take care of themselves if, if you activate them, mm -hmm. um, and they can fight as well. And since um, the air has an aggression of three, you can like pump out some attacks even even though uh, they lose some guys. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like this little unit. I think I would use it if if I had one point exactly yeah. of warriors to, you you know, and I had levy, you know, my entire setup was set up, but I had one point left. Um, I yeah. consider throwing these guys in for, for that. Yeah, I think for me as well, I think they're like just, I can't decide if they're better or worse than a point of warriors since the warriors can use abilities. But for me, it's like if I have that point, as you said, and I have this, cool unit of six models that I never use, uh, then I would probably put this down uh, instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I think 
for the wild, I might would rather use the abilities. Yeah. But yeah. with the under earth, <clears throat> there's only like one kind of good melee ability. <laughs> uh, and then I, there's a couple of good magic and kind of orders abilities that you can yeah. kind of combo with these guys. So I'd be more inclined to take this for, for the under earth, yeah. in my opinion. And as I said, from the Great Kingdoms perspective, I rarely use like foot warriors in Great Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. um, if I use them, it's like a small unit just to generate a dice or something, but I really use like foot warriors for fighting. Um, I haven't the, tried out the mounted warriors yet, but that's in my future list. But cool. I think this was written like if I have a Great Kingdoms army and I want like a, a nice little unit, I'll just take these guys. Why not? Yeah, I like it. It's very thematic and yeah. uh, makes sense. Let's move on to the Sacred Order. Yeah. Um, so these are, <laughs> it's one point for four Hearthguard. Um, so they have Hearthguard stats, essentially. Right. Yeah. Uh, but they have two special rules, Sacred Codex, Martial Prowess. Uh, before step one in the melee, they can count as being equipped with heavy weapons. Yep. And uh, the enemy cannot close ranks, That's which right. is a nice little uh, buff there when you're yeah. smashing them in <laughs> with your giant swords. And then the Martial Prowess rule, another little bit of fatigue utility here. After yep. the first melee, they can remove a fatigue from the sacred order yeah and you can use that once per turn but basically the first time you charge in so um yeah this yeah this, this is also is awesome. like one of those units that i that i was actually missing from uh, once again uh, i wrote this with with the, the great kingdoms in mind so even if you have the sapphire elves you don't have like a dedicated elite unit you know like sword monsters or uh, anything like that from the warhammer world and also, if you play like a human um, army, there's no unit that that can represent like uh, inner circle knights or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought, like, why don't we have like a, a foot hard guard unit that can just smash stuff up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so own. it's like even like an exotic unit with a more kind elite. Of yeah, kind kind of unit. Here. And you could like build these guys as like uh, warrior monks, or you can build them like. A, like an um, eclectic band of like four guys with different equipment, or you can have, as I said, like sword masters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like that. Just use the, the imagination. The yeah. Okay. Um, so the thought behind the rules here was like to make uh, a hard card unit that could actually be tailored to different uh, fighting styles. So you can go in and use uh, hand weapons and shields if you want that, or you can go in with with heavy weapons. But then, of course, the downside is that you your armor will be lower mm -hmm. as well. Um, okay. And the fatigue removal was just to, to make sure that you can do like multiple uh, combats with them, and they'll still yeah. be fighting. So um, I'm That's looking okay. forward to trying this out. It's, uh, I think like charging once um, with shields and then remove your own fatigue and giving the enemy a fatigue and then charge again uh, and then activate the great weapon mm -hmm. ability to just smash them up when they have a fatigue. That would be nice. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. And again, this is, I don't know what it is with Age of Magic, but um, again, if like, you just take one point of hearth guard, if you just have one point of, yeah. I don't know. So now that I think about it, you know, when I think of warriors and hearth guard in Age of Magic, I'm thinking like at least six hearth guard and like twelve man warrior units. Yeah. So it's kind of like yeah. a point and a half. Yeah. And so if you find your your list is restricted to just a single point, yeah. um, then the these mercs look a little better. Um, yeah, I so agree. Kind of feels like you're getting something a little more than just yeah. the you know the eight warriors. Since the usually you remove uh, models to buy like uh, the lieutenant or uh, or to put two units of warriors together, as you said, with under earth, you want that 12 man unit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Usually, you have these small four, four, like four model units left over, and hopefully, this this uh, list can can like tempt you into trying something else. Yeah, uh, that's great. <clears throat> All right, well, let's pop over to the southern mercenaries. Yeah. One trusty pikeman. <laughs> the 12 levies here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they generate a Sagadai. The armor's four in melee 
and yeah. three against shooting, so that's a little worse. Yeah. Their aggression is a half, so they're, they're just melee guys. Uh, they got three special rules, yeah. Forest of Spears and Fikes. They get a plus one on all attack dice during any melee in which it's charged by mounted units or models with imposing. So look out. Do some extra damage there. Um, veterans and young bloods, when they assemble in the combat pool, they get two extra attack and two defense th- for each fatigue yeah. uh, marker that it has. Um, is that the vagrant warriors in Age of yeah. Vikings? They yeah. get that. Okay, that's where that came. And Same then <laughs> their first move or charge activation in the open is a distance of medium, and then any subsequent one is a short. Which yeah. is that? I know Sarissa is kind of a shooting attack, but is that how Sarissa's move too, or charge? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't played any Age of uh, okay. Animal. It's something. Or... Yeah, it might be flip flopped. Mm-hmm. Were they so I'm not sure. I, I short, think I just charge, made this one up because I wanted like a unit that that you shouldn't be able to like launch into the enemy. Uh, yeah, so they kind of advance slowly, <clears> and, <throat> yeah. and uh, as the the fight goes on, you, yeah, uh, they get harder and harder to to take yeah. out. I wanted to, like we can just add a note on the armor there because mm-hmm. um, some of the feedback that I got from my groups was that they they wanted them to have armor for against shooting as well. Um, and I was a little bit hesitant to put that in because yeah. maybe then they become like this really annoying 12-man unit that, that will never Yeah, uh, just <laughs> looking what I see here, I think the three is uh, appropriate because, yeah. um, you know, once the battle starts, yeah, I, I have played the Vagrant Warriors. And yeah. those, those dudes, once they get down to, you know, two or three fatigues, yeah. uh, they're like almost impossible to get rid of. Yeah. And you really yeah. need to to shoot him so having like a built-in weakness i guess is yeah. i think appropriate because yeah. um everything here is really good you don't need the the saga abilities um they still only have aggression of like a like four attack dice in the beginning so yeah if you don't fatigue them then mm-hmm. they won't be aggressive either but the, the thought here was to make like a pike block of course um there are a lot of good uh, pike models out there mm-hmm. um and make like a, a like a levy unit that could be really defensive and stick around and be annoying uh, yeah. instead of just stay there, staying in cover and shooting. I think that that's cool. And actually, you know, if if Age of Hannibal had come out first, I bet there would be Sarissas or Pikes in Age maybe, of Magic, yeah. you know, because yeah, yeah. uh, they weren't like in, invented yet, you know, so, so to speak oh, uh, right. in the Saga universe. Um, so I think this is, yeah. this is cool. Um, um very speaking about the, mm-hmm. uh, like not in, uh, rules that are not invented because, um, I wrote this, uh, list before, uh, the age of invasions came out. And one thing that me and Hamza were talking about was that the power level of mercenaries in age of invasion seems to have gone up a bit. So yeah, I'm actually look at the mercs in there and we're like, Whoa, everything is so good. Uh, <laughs> so I think. If I read that book before I wrote this list, then probably most of these units would have been uh, a bit better as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I I agree <laughs> with you. I'm actually looking. I was working on the Fimblewintle rules pack right now, which yeah, has Age yeah. of Invasions and Age of Vikings allowed. Yeah. And I was kind of looking at the different mercenary options. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to kind of do one table to kind of combine them. But, yeah, there's, I don't think, at there's least three... Three troops that are the same as in Age of Vikings, but they're just better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, yeah, good to point out so there. This pike block as well. I'm not sure if anybody else but the Great Kingdoms would use them, but <laughs> but um, it would be nice to see them as well with the, with the Lords of the Wild. Could you, could build some cool uh, spear elves or like lizardmen uh, with uh, like large spears or long spears mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I like it. Um, just combat levy are always pretty good. I could see yeah. using it in the wild. I could see using it as like, um, <coughs> you know, I'm using goblins for my levy in the under yeah, earth, right. and it just yeah. having like, you know, badass goblins or a unit of orcs to be, <laughs> yeah. be these guys or something. You know, I can thematically yeah. distinguish them. Um, yeah, I cool. think is a cool idea. Um, all right. Well, we're gonna jump over to. The chaos dice marauding yeah. cavalry. So this is one point for eight warriors. 
generating one saga die armor four and melee three against shooting because they're <clears throat> mounted so yep. um standard aggression yep. um they're mounted on animals they have javelins that's right. Um, so already that's kind of a little rarer in Age of Magic. Yeah, that's missing. I think that they have composite bows, right? Right in the horde. Yeah, the horde's got composite bows. Their chariot has javelins. Yeah, the right. levy and wild get javelins. Yeah. Um, there's not not a whole lot of javelins going on. So just having javelins kind of makes this unit distinct. Yeah, and I think. Like you could probably use other models for these uh, guys as well. You could use models with like throwing axes or whatever. I just mm -hmm. used the javelins because they have some cool rules when you charge, for example. So yep. Uh, so the Marauders <coughs> rule after deployment, but before the first turn, you can redeploy them entirely or make a free movement of medium across open terrain. Uh, but they, if you do this, they can't charge turn yeah. one. And yeah. then they're fast cavalry. If the opponent uses a fatigue. To reduce their movement, um, it's a medium instead of a short. So yeah. they can still kind of scooch away. So um, pretty pretty minor special rules, but we know javelins yeah. are pretty pretty good, pretty tasty. You yeah, know, everything was, being even, you can't complain. I, I was hoping to like make some cavalry unit that it's not like obvious what it's doing. It's not obviously charging you or it's not obviously holding an objective, but these are like more of a harassing type of unit. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem with uh, composite bows is that if you get a fatigue, then the enemy will catch you. Um, so I think these guys can mitigate that by trying to get away instead. Get that, and also, get if you there. if you deploy them uh, smart, you can deploy them on a on a side where they're not like facing other cavalry and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so um, if we're talking about chaos dice now, so I'm thinking about yeah. other world, and yeah, I could see throwing it in there i think you said they don't they have a, a few shooting tricks but having a shooting unit is yeah. cool and this kind of just does what the other world does which is yeah. uh try to catch you off guard kind of mess with you kind of dictate the battle so uh, i could see using this there's a couple good orders abilities um give them plus one armor yeah that's uh, right that would be cool give them resilience <laughs> teleport them and shoot yeah uh you could do that too so i think yeah. it's cool i think also the the undead legions could use um, these guys and mix up that list instead of just being yes. a lot of warriors on foot to have like more of kind of a, a harassment unit that will be in your face mm -hmm. quite early that's right. Yeah, yeah they don't. The, the warriors can't be mounted, so it's just the hard no. guard, or you could take you know the mobile creatures, yeah, or yeah. a scourge or something like that. So, um, yeah, this could be fun with the undead, for sure. Um, and you know, kind of mixes right, mixes right in with the horde. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're obviously like wolf riders or barbarian cavalry or whatever. So, mm -hmm. I think the horde. Can put them to good use as well with the, uh, what's it called? The, the ability that gives them extra shard range as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It's a All passive right. one, right? Well, let's move on to the the Nimrods. So I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> this cracks me up. Did, I don't know. You, don't probably... hear, you don't hear that word a lot. Why are they <laughs> Why are they called Nimrods? Does that mean? And it just means well, idiot in English as far as. I'm... No, Nimrod is like a bibl biblical character. Oh, okay. Uh, he was a hunter, so that's why I chose it. <laughs> but maybe it's used in another way. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, you must have done something wrong because yeah. it's like a it's a negative term. Okay. Because um, there's like an ancient um, uh, character called Nimrod. Okay. I'm not sure if it's translated like that in the English version of the Bible, but mm -hmm. like in the, in the Old Testament. It's cool. Um, it's it's like a, hunt, a hunter. So yeah, this kind of reminds me of something that'd be like in third edition Warhammer or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, my unit of Nimrods. Uh, <laughs> well, that's okay. funny. So chaos dice, uh, one point for eight warriors. They generate a saga die. Their armor is three in melee, four against shooting. Yep. Uh, the standard aggression, and uh, their armor in three in melee because they're equipped with bows. This is so, actually the, the Cretan archers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they do one. have better uh, armor shooting 
yeah. than uh, Levy or uh, just any unit of Bow Warriors. So, and they have a couple. Ooh, we got a we got a couple different things going yeah. on. Yeah. So they're peerless shooters, so they can activate the shoot once for free. And but they it can't. It has to be the first activation, so yeah, they can't like maneuver the, the, or rest. Each of both archer units. Um, okay, and then we have the tools of the trade. They carry with them arrows made for all possible targets. When activated to shoot, you can choose <laughs> one of the arrows below, and it can only be used once during the game. Uh, yeah. So why don't you tell us about the options? Yeah, there. so this unit was actually written with the other world in mind, because <laughs> I know Hamza has, has been complaining that they have no like, <laughs> dedicated shooting units. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to make one that, that you can also good, make cool, buddy. Do, uh, cool models with, like uh, hunters or like these tribesmen or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote this uh, shooting attack to uh, compensate for not being able to use uh, abilities. So this will let you, to sh let you choose an arrow type depending on the target you're shooting. So the first one is the true flight arrows, mm -hmm. uh, which, will, which will double the, the range basically for for the shooting yeah, too, uh, so too it's, large it's like the, the Ro uh, norman uh, activation um with that one so like a turn one activation maybe yeah uh, to just not, get some shots in not bad you know in age of magic you know we got the war yeah. machine so it's not crazy <clears throat> yeah it's no. just something else you can use to reach out exactly and then we have uh, what's called the razor wind um then, then they will get two bonus attack dice and a plus one bonus to their um, their roll. So it's like a, a, a crossbow shot, actually. Uh, but you cannot increase their attack dice by any other means. Um, so this will make them shoot six shots mm -hmm. uh, with crossbows. Um, and then finally, we have the star shard arrows, um, which decreases the range. So this is what I imagine is like the, the kill shot for a monster. Um, Ooh, yeah. And after the attack roll, you inflict an additional casualty on the target. So it's not a hit, it's a casualty. Boom. Uh, so hopefully you can put some fatigues on the monster first and then use this uh, ability to, to bring it down. Mm -hmm. Or maybe kill uh, like a warlord or something. Yeah, I like it. Um... It's fun. You can do each one of these once. So you're gonna be, yeah. you know, is this the time? Yeah. Yeah, to, to and it's like it. 50 percent of the game. So the other three turns, uh, they're gonna be regular uh, archers, mm -hmm. basically. So um, yeah. I think they'll be fun. We'll see if they're overpowered. I can already see some some builds that will make them uh, annoying. <laughs> well, there's but, that. Uh, the undead can get the. Whatever the one that shoots for free or whatever, you know, or a plus one to hit or something like that. So I could definitely see wanting yeah, to combo maybe. that with the razor. I'm, wind. Thinking, I'm thinking actually again uh, about the other world where you can like teleport them or do other stuff. Oh, with them. yeah. That, yeah, the mm -hmm. razor wind or star so, shark. We'll see, I, I don't have great. the battle boards in front of me now, so I'm not sure about which ones are, are like orders abilities and which ones are activations. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we'll see how these play out. I hope people will play these a lot. So we'll see if we need to tweak them. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, be good in the horde mm -hmm. too. There isn't yeah, too, too much to, to buff, <clears throat> buff the shooting on those guys. So that's right. Pretty good. All yep. Right. And I'll have to think about changing the names then. If, if no, I think that's name. funny. Don't change it. <laughs> Don't change it. Okay. Uh, it's my favorite name. Um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, okay, the thing from the marshes here, Chaos yeah. Dice. This has got to be your, your baby here. There's a lot of yeah, thought. Yeah, the strange, the odd monster that everybody had in their collection. <laughs> so it's one to three points. So we have a yeah. mercenary monster. Generates one yeah. Saga die. It's armor four. Aggression is 10. So it kind of has a beh behemoth profile, but it's missing four attacks. So it's yeah, got to have yeah. something to make up for that and one of those is uh breath so it's yeah. got a breath attack with an aggression of two specifically yeah um it does have imposing primitive resilience to like a monster but then it has the many-headed freak rule yep. <laughs> so it gets 
Uh, free head for, for one point. Uh, we you can are. get a couple extra head here if you want to pay uh, extra. Yeah, you can get all, all three yeah. heads for, for three points. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that would be You have to be kind of crazy to, to do that, yeah. but yeah. It would be cool. <laughs> uh, it would be cool. And it would save yeah. you the trouble of, of painting a few points of worth of models. So, yeah. uh, okay, why don't you hit us with the heads here, man? Yeah, so this one also was written uh, with a, a certain person in mind. I have a friend called Thomas who has uh, a lot of cool models and he, he loves uh, strange uh, creatures and monsters as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and he also is a good sculptor. So I was hoping that he would sculpt like a cool giant or something uh, with three heads. Um, so you can choose uh, additional heads when you recruit it and it will take up the points by one for each head you, you pick. Mm -hmm. And you just pick from the list here. So the first one is the thinking head or thinking head. Uh, it will make it smarter. Uh, and this one is like a copy of the, uh, what do you call it, the, the Morrow Isles, like that mm -hmm. list with, uh, yeah. uh, with the monsters. So you can remove uh, Saga Dice from the magic bonus ability to remove the primitive status of this uh, uh, creature or monster. So that means that you unlock um, the Saga abilities. But mm -hmm. that will then compensate the, the low aggression um, uh, of the profile so there are okay. some bo battle boards that, that can increase attacks so i think it's it would be nice to to keep sure. it um, weaker from the beginning the beginning um and then you can have the puking head the puking head we've yeah. all been there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we played a lot of uh warm fantasy right with the with the trolls yeah it's a callback to mm -hmm. the the um, uh, what do you call them uh, not the swamp trolls the uh, the river trolls. River trolls, yeah. Yeah, the puke on the knights when you charge them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So after you assemble the combat pool, if the monster is not exhausted, you can take a single fatigue on yourself to immediately roll three dice. And if you roll equal to or lower than the enemy armor, you inflict a casualty. Once again, it's not a hit, it's a casualty. Yeah, oh. it's... So this was uh, with the river trolls in mind that if you fight like higher armor, targets then they will your your just melt say yeah yeah you, you can't right avoid through. the puke if you're clad in armor actually mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you have uh, regular clothes on then you can just avoid it uh, or try to avoid it at, mm -hmm. at least so i think this uh, is also a quite strong ability uh, and we'll have to see if we will tweak it to two dice or whatever uh, or if we will just make it uh, hits instead of casualties, but I think it's quite uh, thematic as it is. Uh, so maybe if you go after like uh, eight man unit of heart card or, or whatever, you can just start puking. <laughs> mm -hmm. like this it, also, yeah. if, if you have a, like a Hydra model, this could be like a flaming breath or whatever. So it's not locked to, to a giant. It's just what I had in mind when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. It could be any model or it could be a, like a chimera, chimera or whatever. Sure. Um, so there's some options there. Uh, and for the final head, it's the art head or the hard head. Uh, and it will take the, the armor value against shooting up to five. Mm -hmm. So make it a little bit more resilient against shooting. Yeah. And armor five is nice yeah. for sure. And I'm really interested yeah. in, in, in seeing what people pick if they just take one point, if, if they will always take one head or if they will take different, depending on the I'm like getting uh, that puke and, puke and head right now, yeah. right here, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, but the thinking head, interesting as well. Yeah. <clears throat> I like that. Remove from the magic. Yeah, and then the downside there is that then you will lose one saga dice for just unlocking the abilities, and then you will have to sink more dice into making the monster uh, fight even better. So probably it will balance out with uh, with the resources. Mm -hmm. so, uh, okay. Yeah. We'll see. Fun little guy to try out. Yeah. Um, all right. Now we've got some uh, neutral. Yeah, kind of, uh, so the, the theme so far has been uh, three uh, units for each uh, side, so to speak. And I tried to make uh, different kinds of units, so levy, heart garden, warriors, and creatures, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the final three are, as you said, neutral, so they're open to both uh, chaos and, and um, order dice. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll see some, some variations there when we, when we try these out. All right, so 
The harrowers <laughs> are a unit of two creatures for one yeah. point, and uh, their special rule is creatures of many yeah. myths. Yeah. Uh, the chart here doesn't have the armor, aggression, or equipment because it'll depend on uh, which kind of archetype you yeah. uh, get it here. So you're going to choose one during deployment. You can do a biped, yeah. quadruped, or a flyers. So yeah. I'll do the, the biped here. He's yeah. armor. They're armor four, like a normal biped. Their aggression is five. Um, so that is that is normal. Special yeah. rules, presence, imposing, resilience one. So that's normal. And But they got to rule man eaters. During a combat against mm -hmm. an enemy hero, they generate two extra attack dice. And they can add one additional attack dice for each of the hero's fatigue markers when assembling the combat pool. Yum, 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 yeah. yum, yum. <laughs> All right here. He said something so to bring it back against those yeah. stupid uh, paladins. Yeah, Great yeah typical, typical ogres here. Um, um, there are a lot of nice ogre models that we rarely see because nobody plays the, uh, the list here with the minotaurs or ogre equivalent. Mm -hmm. So I thought this this would be a nice way of bringing some ogres back into the armies here. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in one of your uh, Saga Taurus days, you were discussing like uh, statistics for when you need to remove fatigue or when you should remove fatigue from, yeah. from war. Mm -hmm. I think the limit was at 13 attack dice, right? Um... Or was it? Like it's if you no, don't I... have 13 attack dice, it's not worth spending a fatigue to I take more. I believe... Order. I'd have to go back. I believe if yeah. you have nine or more, okay, then um, just burn it, burn it all. Okay. Um, for resilience, it's, when I wrote resilience this, it's about, one, yeah, I thought it is was the thing uh, there. around thirteen. So I, I thought, like, can we make a unit that will actually try to use fatigue on enemy characters? Because usually, when we when we attack characters here, we just leave fatigue on and, and do multiple mm -hmm. uh, activations. So with these guys, you can actually go in with 10 attacks, and if they have one uh, fatigue, you'll, you'll get uh, 13 attacks. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, yeah. it, will, it, will, it will just uh, gobble him down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's nice, too, because you can use, spend their fatigue. Um, well, you pop this, you, you get all this at the beginning, but you get all these extra attacks, and then you can spend their yeah. fatigue to increase your armor. So it's exactly. not like you're... Exactly. Um, you have a bunch of extra attack dice to kind of make up for using yeah. their fatigues to uh, keep you alive. You know, every exactly. once in a while you want to do that instead. But exactly. yeah, I like them. I uh, you also think there are lots of possibilities here for for different um, miniatures. Like you could use Croxigors, You can use yeah, like Rat Ogres if you don't want to use the uh, the Under Earth type, like the mutants type. Yeah, anything yeah, with a big mouth or yeah. uh, the classic uh, Warhammer ogre, you know, the man eaters, yeah, you know, yeah. like the dogs of war, they're just kind of like elite, elite ogres. So yeah. I think this is cool. And when I was at All Fathers, the name of the game was Don't Engage Any Heroes Till They're Exhausted. So uh, this is perfect <laughs> yeah. for my playbook. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully it will be a counter as well to, to the warlords on, on beasts uh, that actually are ridden monsters. Yes, those, those are uh, good. So those are quite, uh, we see them a lot here. So mm -hmm. once they start racking up fatigue, hopefully these guys could, could go after them. Absolutely. Okay, <clears throat> now we have a quadrupeds version. Yeah. It looks like standard quadruped stats, special yeah, rules, plus predators. If they finish a charge move and contact with an enemy that is benefiting from light or solid cover from an area of terrain, add one fatigue marker to the enemy during step one of the ensuing melee. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of cool because normally quadrupeds you know, are kind of stuck outside of terrain. You don't want to go in, but this will let you go in there and then yeah. at least kind of just even the odds. So you kind of have speed and fl flexibility, which you don't normally have. Yeah. And also, it will like hopefully force people to not always hug the train as soon as they see. <laughs> see yeah, they might want to. So if you put these guys down, you you'll have some control over where the enemy will put their um, like archers or or stuff. They could still put them there, but then you'll have some a tool to get them out. Mm -hmm. um, and 
a note on the wording here because I first wrote this like benefiting from lighter solid cover uh, and then we when we had a discussion in the group it was like well you could get that rule from I think some of the spells so then yeah. I had to clarify that it had to come from a, a piece of area of terrain because otherwise uh, it would okay. break a lot of uh, uh, like buffs that you actually invest to get Mm-hmm. Like you invest in a in a sorcerer and you invest to cast a spell and you try to get a good result on the casting and so and all that. So uh, I try to not have a unit that would just nullify that investment. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah, but hopefully they will go in and just uh, like eat up all the archers that are hugging. Yeah, <laughs> the trees. there's a few out there. Yeah. Um, last we we got the flyers here. So this is probably yeah. my favorite one. They got the flying creature rules, so they are aggression mm-hmm. four only, kind of like normal flying creatures, but they're raveners. So, yeah, this special ability was sorely missing from the the yeah. original release of my opinion. So you gotta um, have flying yeah. over. Uh, so the first time they move over an enemy unit, you roll three dice. And they suffer a casualty for each die that exceeds its armor against melee attacks. And, um, yeah, you just kind of clarified you could uh, cancel them with resilience yeah. as normal. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really cool. That's that's themey. Um, it's yeah. fun. Makes them different. It's also one of the units that I was missing, as you said, when I first got the book. I was When we saw that you, have, you could have, like, flying units and uh, flying monsters and all that. Uh, I actually was uh, quite surprised when it didn't have any. You have the like the spectral units from the undead, mm-hmm. but that's quite odd. I don't think I, don't, I haven't seen anybody play it because I think it's uh, since they damage themselves. Yeah, uh, I think it will be um, not as, as as effective. So I wanted to make a unit that would actually um, like reward you for flying over and mm-hmm. being annoying uh, with these guys. And if the enemy wants to to kill them, they'll have to to invest some uh, activations as well. Um, and this is also a, a thing that I I will have to evaluate when when people start playing them if it's if casualties is if the right to go or just hits. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, it's, it's tough. Cause, I mean, if you're going against heroes and hearth guard, you have to roll a six. Then, yeah. You know, and the the one yeah. titan, you need a six. Yeah. It's kind of dicey from yeah. using. The um, other world, you know, they have that at- attack spell with uh, you put down the stick and stuff. So this kind yeah. of seems similar to that to me. And I know there's a breath spell, um, you know, so it's kind of duplicating, you know, kind of yeah. recreating that. I, I don't, I don't think those are too powerful by any stretch. And you know, I borderline don't even really use them. But there's something <laughs> thematically. I don't know. <laughs> what it is about just moving yeah. over it's just the image of yeah, it's, but i know what you're thinking you're thinking about the the pterodon riders yeah the pterodons the screamers dropping rocks like screamers small, small bears dropping rocks on, on stormtroopers mm-hmm. that's what you're thinking yeah something about that just gives me the pleasure uh yeah. disproportionate to what's going on here. <laughs> uh okay um Next up, we have uh, so that that covers the harrowers. So it's two yeah. creatures. I think any one of these are are fine if you want to just take two creatures. So I like to do that with my yeah. other world, with but under earth <clears throat> and the wild. Uh, I'm kind of less gung ho on that, but um, yeah. In our meta here, it's it's quite. I've seen it both in the other world list and in the. Um... Uh, the Great Kingdoms list, where people take a unit of three uh, three creatures and a unit of two creatures. Okay. So when I wrote this, I was like thinking that maybe we could get people to make the unit of two a bit more like like more like a tool instead of just like a, a regular unit. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of tough. So with the Under Earth, I like the three. <laughs> yeah, I saw you had two units of three, right? Yeah, but I I've used. Two units of two creatures to great effect with the other world, but I don't, yeah. I don't, you know, there is one really good ability that combos with those guys, but, um, you know, other boards have abilities that I think would be nice. So I don't, yeah. I think, you know, the two creatures could be good with pretty much any, any faction, yeah. you know, yeah. 
They, uh, they're good until they're not. Just to make like then a, they die. If you want them to be special without like having uh, to build like a list around abilities and magic and all that, you can just take, put a point in this uh, in this bracket. Yeah. And, so these are all these units are <laughs> kind of saving you saga dice typically yeah. in some way because you're yeah. not using you don't have to use abilities from your board. So. Um, you know, some boards, you know, you eat up, <laughs> eat up yep. those dice quicker, <laughs> quicker than not. So yep. you might be more inclined to look at these. Um, but yeah, I think they're fun. Let's yep. move on to the lore master here yeah. order or chaos. This is two points for one hero here. So let's look at this whopper. It's a hero generating a saga die, their armor five, aggression four, and melee zero. For, for shooting if that were to come up. So kind of like a lieutenant a little bit in that regard. Yeah. But they have determination. They have magic, presence, yep. resilience one, and then three special rules here. Yep. So what what does that magic do just on it on its own? I, uh, I, it I know it's in the, magic, the rule book. The, it allows you to generate uh, um, the magic dice, and it allows you to uh, select spells and cast spells. Okay, so that's just what like a sorcerer yeah. has. It magic. makes him a sorcerer, basically. Or okay, her. so this is a sorcerer, but it's got better armor. It can yeah. fight a little bit. So uh, do you have the the high elf guy? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, the... have the high elf, or you can use like uh, some cool human, like sorcerer with a weapon or or like a cool necromancer or whatever. Okay, so um, to me, this is like the Witcher. He's a badass yeah. and he casts some spell. Yeah. You know, it's like every every young man's fantasy. <laughs> you know, I'm a fighter, but I also cast spells. I actually so, wrote so this yeah. guy just uh, to incorporate the, the title Sword and Sorcery some <laughs> some way into this <laughs> document. Okay, well, okay, so he's a wizard. All the rest is just filler. <laughs> he's like a lieutenant, but he, he's kind of like a wizard. Or sorcerer, yeah. but he's got three abilities. Yeah. Uh, the Master of the Arts just says you can't include any other models with the magic special rule. Yeah, that's right. Uh, when you include him, so this is an in addition, and it'll kind of replace your sorcerer. Yeah, and that's why it costs two points. So he will, you will not spend a point on a regular sorcerer. So it, he could sort of, you could sort of say that he costs one point, but with a one point upgrade mm -hmm. to unlock any domain of magic. That's what the Master of the Arts does as well. Yeah. So does that mean? Do all three have to come from one domain, or can you um, choose? What do? You... No, I think it's like a like a regular sorcerer. If you have two domains, you can you can uh, come combine them. Okay. Different. And so, also the what do you call that? Uh, the great kingdoms, uh, like the the. There's like a special yeah, legendary like unit of wizards. Or, yeah, exactly. Conclave. They can combine for they, four different. Yeah, they, can they have four spells, but they can combine them from any any lore. Okay, so, so I think you should be able if you if you dump like two points of your eight into this guy, you should be able to to find some nice combo from the all the the, uh, the domains. Okay, yeah. So he's definitely very intriguing. He should be for anybody because you yeah, have I four think... different lores that you don't normally have access to. That yeah, can... exactly. That's um, one one thing that I noticed here is like we usually select the same spells. Like it doesn't matter what army you have, you always take the same spells. If you have a single like this this spell word, usually you take mists and you take this one and that one. And this spell word always I always take bolts. And so when I wrote this guy, I was like, why don't we give people the option to to try different domains and see if that will affect how they uh, mm -hmm. build their army and how they like plan their magic. Uh, yeah. or they're casting rather yeah so i mean this one guy opens up so many options yeah. it just yeah, exactly. the rest of your troops and what you want to do new yeah, combos, exactly. so but then again you have to you have to to put two points of your eight into into him so yeah. i think it's a fair trade-off yeah uh so he's got a couple more rules sword and sorcery yeah so this is the one you wanted in here each yeah. time an enemy model is removed as a casualty by a, a melee attack made by a lore master, the controlling player immediately generates a uh, magic dice. Yeah. So I think that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, I think it's it will open up some uh, like a melee oriented oriented uh, casters that I, that I haven't seen. Like I have only seen the the one that when you transform and, and just push mm -hmm. that monster in there, but this one opens up like 
you could throw a spell like a buff spell on, your, on yourself you could go in on a charge like kill one or two warriors in a, in a unit build up the magic pool again throw another spell maybe do a, a second charge and so on so i hope this will like add some like snowball effect to the magic yeah i uh, think it's base. cool and then <clears throat> you know you want to be efficient too yeah. so you gotta do a trade-off you know well, i could load up the magic bonus now but oh i could charge into uh those yeah. guys over there i'm sure i'll but get a couple you only ask an aggression of four so if you're going going against warriors then you'll hit twice and if they mm -hmm. close rank you'll probably kill one but this will force you to like okay i will throw a, maybe i will take a, a buff spell that gives him extra attack dice mm -hmm. and throw that one first and then use him as like a lieutenant and go in a fight and then i will generate like two dice again and i can throw something else yeah so i hope this will will do some uh, some interesting stuff with the with the sorcerers you... instead of just walking around and throwing buff spells on just your most hiding. important unit yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh um, i definitely do that the yeah. last one dreadful potency if the spell yeah. causes a mass lore master roll an abuse of power they can modify by a plus one, minus one. Yeah, the opposing Fred, player. What are you doing here? Yeah. What are you doing with this? This is giving the the opponent like. Um, oh, the opposing yeah. player. So it's not like the sapphire elves where the, oh, okay. the magician himself of. can can alter it. This is like if you abuse this power, then you your opponent can can hurt you. Oh, so okay. This I is like like well, a balancing. Uh, yeah, so this is what stops everybody from doing Spear of Light every turn with this guy. With every <laughs> exactly. army, every army doing a Spear of Light exactly. every turn. Yeah. This makes you I, think about the utility honesty, options. I think, uh, the abuse of power table is is really not that frightening. Um, no. It's like only two. I think it's only on the double one and double six, right? When you when you die. Um, oh, yeah. All the effects I are mean, like, you can forget you all your spells. And yeah, and you can take fatigue. If you roll you know, four three, plus, you, you, three, four pluses, you know, yeah. on the, the day you get a D3. But I think this one pluses. makes it a bit more dangerous because I've been playing a lot of Sapphire Elves uh, myself. So I know uh, the abuse of power is it's quite powerful to, to like have the plus one, minus one. Mm -hmm. um, and this one makes it so that you're not inclined to like use the, the, the best effect all the time. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, <coughs> good, good call. Brings them in line. Very yep. fine. Um, yeah, I think for two points, like you say, I mean, I think it's pretty fair what you have outlined here. So, Yeah, um, I'm, I'm hoping to see a lot of lore masters <laughs> in November. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. All right, last one here, Demigog. Yeah. Order of Chaos. One point. This is a hero. Generates one Saga die. Armor four. Four aggression in melee. Zero. Um, so lower armor, it's on, he's unarmed, but he can be mounted. So that's kind of yeah. cool. He's got determination, bodyguards, um, uh, presence, resilience one, and then, uh, page, half a page of words here. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yes. so he's kind of a weedy hero that shouldn't be fighting. Yeah. Um, this is but, like a, a passive hero. First of all, he's got the provocation ability from, yeah. uh, I think it's Njal, right? In Age of uh, Vikings. Okay, so what Or is it the, uh, no, maybe it's the, um, uh, um, what do you call him? The poet. There's one of the, the Viking characters, uh, like the mercenaries that can, uh, that can okay. provoke um, uh, an enemy unit that if you... Um, remove one of their fatigues that unit has to uh, charge if possible so you can provoke it okay into charging. so yeah let me read that while the demagogue's on the yeah. table you can discard a fatigue marker from an enemy unit visible to the demagogue at the end of each of your orders phases only one unit can be affected if you do the targeted unit's first activation during the following activation must be to charge if possible if it's not possible um it suffers no penalty, can be activated freely. Your opponent may choose not to activate the unit to yeah. avoid being forced to so charge. This is actually copy pasted from the Age of Vikings. Um, okay. Uh, it's one of the Viking characters, actually, that can provoke. So, Demi Guy's got a big mouth. Yep. Trying to, lure, trying to lure people in. Uh, he's yeah. got silver tongued, 
ruled during a melee involving a friendly unit within very short of the demagogue. The demagogue may inflict a fatigue on itself to add two attack dice to the friendly unit's combat pool. This ability can be done once during each melee. And in addition, this ability gives you uh, the ability to rest and remove all your fatigues. Yeah. So yeah. he can uh, encourage the the troops around him. I like that. Yeah. So this is like your standard warrior priest or like a chaos uh, prophet or whatever. Um, yeah. One of my friends actually built, uh, yeah, Thomas that I mentioned before, he built like really strange prophet that was like carried <laughs> by like a million acolytes <laughs> on uh -huh. a small base. That's cool. And it's carrying him into battle. So I like it. I'm kind of thinking of the, the old Bretonian. Yeah, the, you uh, relic use way. Well. yeah, you can use that as well. Okay. The last rule, posse of the prof prophetic yeah. during deployment, uh, you can put them on foot or mounted. And this represents the fact that demagogues are often accompanied by a large body of followers. If you put them on a mount, you can do an animal or a beast on his equipment. And that kind of modifies his rule. Yeah. If he's on an animal, his armor goes down to three against shooting. Um, increases silver tongued from very short to short. And then he can move and charge L. Yep. If he's on a beast, his aggression goes to six. So a little fightier. But you don't have bodyguards anymore. Nope. Kind of like a you know, warlord on a beast. Silver tongue goes to medium. He can uh, you know, shout even further. Yeah. Yep. And, People can see him from farther away. <laughs> and then like a monster uh, or a beast, amount of beast, he can charge L in open terrain. And then otherwise he moves a medium. Yeah. So... So this uh, wall of text is actually just says if you uh, choose to mount him on different um, yeah, mounts, then his uh, range will actually just, just kind of yeah yeah changes the the range. This was just the thought behind this was just to open up uh, a million possibilities to build a cool demagogue, like either on a horse or like as you said on an, an altar or mm -hmm. like carried by a monster or whatever. So. I'm not sure if this, uh, I think that maybe the ability is quite weak, as we've discussed in my group here, that two attack dice is, you can, it's not, usually it's not going to like make, make or break a fight. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if it's too weak just by looking at it, but the provocation could bring some fun uh, trickery to the table, I think. Yeah, I think it looks cool. Um, I could see using it with my, my under earth yeah. kind of. Since the range is Jacking unlimited with, uh, with the provocation, you can could really uh, annoy your opponents like from different parts of the mm -hmm. of the table. Always a good good thing. <laughs> Force them to charge your your uh, levy, for example. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. So we had three order dice, three chaos dice, uh, three order and chaos. So yeah, that's nine mercenary yeah. units and uh was there anything on the the cutting room floor that you didn't quite you um, know some cool idea but it never quite came together no actually not actually i had to like make one or two extras <laughs> I, to stretch I, um, for the symmetry um, yeah exactly exactly for the symmetry <laughs> i was <laughs> like well i can't have three three and one yeah yeah or three, two, three, or something like that. So, uh, and also, I wanted to keep it fairly open to play this this limited amount of uh, mercenaries uh, first of all, and then maybe add uh, as we go along. Because if I would have wrote uh, written a list with like fifty units, then it would be quite confusing. Uh, well, I think you got a good so. mix here. I know that age book mercs uh, yeah, there's usually 11 or 12 of them yeah so yeah. nine is is right in line and um you have more options for a lot of these merc you know, you know yeah. the, the demigog you can run them three different ways three different creatures yeah. for the harrowers yeah, exactly. um the nim the Nimrods, <laughs> yeah they have three different arrows but you get those yeah. but three different yeah, heads exactly. on yeah. the thing so there's a lot of variety here and yeah, exactly. uh, i think I think it looks fun. So, yeah, hopefully everybody was able to, to follow along. And, yeah, so the document is on the Discord server. Pick it up and give it a shot. If, you know, like us, play a lot of Age of Magic, you're going to Age of Magic kicks like me. You, you play yeah. a lot in a short amount of time. And uh, 
hopefully it will uh, rejuvenate some AG Magic uh, since most of us played it a lot when it was released and then went back to playing Crusades and Vikings. So I think this mm -hmm. will stir the pot, uh, hopefully. Yeah, and I think um, this is good, especially because some people only are, are, I don't want to say stuck, but you know they just you know they just play fantasy games and you know they just play age of magic so yeah. if you only do age of magic uh you know over the last couple of years you definitely could get a little little stale so just having this yeah. in there is yeah. a, a great idea and uh yeah it's a lot of work putting all this together you, you know nobody's paying you for it i know you're a busy guy so yeah. uh yeah put a lot of work in here you know i tried and I thought I couldn't even come up with one, so uh, you came up with nine. So I, I have to take some from Age of Invasions. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> that's weird. Um, um, but no, that. but um, uh, as you said before, just download a document. It's all free and it's all out there. And I would, I would love to get some feedback if you actually use any of these um, uh, units, because the the thought behind it is to also like tweak it's not a, a set document if something's mm -hmm. too good or too bad and we can just uh, alter it to fit our our needs mm -hmm. so if you play like the exiles five times and think that okay they are too weak then just uh, write a message either on uh, the saga forum or in one of the uh, facebook groups preferably the age of magic group then uh, i'll pick it up somehow okay yeah and so I you're can... on facebook they can tag you there yeah all right. Yep. Your name's on the document. So yeah, for exactly. good or for ill, they're going to find you. <laughs> I'll get some hate emails in the night. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, all right here. So once again, I want to thank all the patrons, Terry, Patrick, Sean, Mitchell, Kevin, and the other 20 plus chaps for making this video possible. Um, you know, just wouldn't have happened otherwise. So uh, thanks to the patrons. If you're interested in that, Head on over, links below. Otherwise, comment below. Uh, yeah. First impressions, Frederick will be monitoring, and uh, you know, he's going to jump on and reply to you with a lengthy response uh, on why you're wrong, I'm sure. Uh, no. <laughs> we'll hit the update kidding. button. Uh, yeah, we're all, it's all, all in good fun here. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Fred. It's good to chat yeah. with you again. And yeah, it's uh, nice to, to uh, get back in yeah. every now and then. Yeah. My chat. Maybe uh, once you got the Crusaders painted up again and got some more games in again, we, maybe we could yeah. revisit them. Yeah. And see have you done a Teutonic Order? Uh, uh, yes, I have. At because um, I think yeah. that's the moment of this recording. It's been recorded, but it hasn't okay. been released yet. Um, that's probably the one I'm going to paint up because nobody plays them here. So okay, yeah, I think I think, I think they're a lot of fun. You know, by the time this comes out, that will be out, and you'll probably will have listening. seen it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, but uh, yeah, good chat with you again, and yeah. uh, we'll do it again. I'll check you later. Take care. Bye bye. Zaga like to see more saga content consider joining the heathen army over on patreon or popping on down to the saga doors day discord server links below thanks guys